gentlemen that we have tonight. We're very honored and thank you very, very much for joining us. Uh, Dr. Ron Wolfson and Hazan Steve Storr, both of you, most of you are very familiar with both of them and they responded within five minutes with a resounding yes, I'd be happy to do that. So uh, I'm going to, uh, without further ado, hand over to Dr. Ron Wolfson. Well, thank you. Hi, guys. And uh, I'm thrilled to be invited to join you. Uh, FGMC is my favorite group of all time. Uh, I've been uh, working with you guys since uh, 1985 <clears throat> when I was first invited to work on the Art of Jewish Living series by my dear friend, uh, Jules Porter, Alava Shalom, uh, who was the international president at the time and my good friend Chuck Simon, Rabbi Chuck Simon, who has uh, kept me involved with you for all these years, and it's always a pleasure to be with you. I'm, I'm calling in from Rochester, Minnesota, where my wife Susie and I have been here for two months. Uh, she received a kidney transplant on uh, February 14th, uh, and uh, I donated my kidney uh, on her behalf, not to her, because this is a good one for you guys. Uh, I thought I could give my kidney to my wife because we're the same blood type. Uh, but it turns out that I could not because I impregnated her. And when men impregnate women, often, not 100% of the time, but often the woman gets the antibodies from the man. So we were not a match. So instead, we've been in a paired kidney exchange. So Susie's donated kidney came from Jacksonville, Florida, where uh, Mayo Clinic has an out outlet. And my kidney went to Jacksonville, Florida, uh, to a 68-year-old woman who had a 3% chance of finding a match. And I was in that 3%. And when she found out about me, she obviously Googled me. She wrote me this long email telling me that and then announcing to me on the email that she's married to a Southern Baptist minister in Florida who went to seminary with my good friend Rick Warren, the mega pastor in Orange County, California. And she obviously learned about my work with you because uh, she uh, she said at the end of the email, email, I feel so blessed to have a Jewish kidney, which is pretty fantastic. So uh, what Danny asked me to talk about tonight were a few tips on how to do this virtual Seder. You know, the second book I did with the men's clubs was a book about the Passover Seder. Some of you might have it or have seen it. Uh, it's still all around and uh, in the second edition. And every year at this time, people will contact me and say, you know what, Ron, I pulled down that book you did with the men's clubs, and it really helps me every year uh, put together a Seder. Now this year, obviously, we are challenged uh, in doing this Seder virtually. Uh, but sure enough, you know, come this week, uh, there will be millions of people on Zoom calls like this uh, doing Seder together. So uh, last week, a few people had asked me, what would be your tips on preparing for the virtual Seder? And so I thought I'd run them through with you, my 10 tips, my top 10 tips for how to pull this off. And uh, then we can talk about it for a few minutes and, uh, and then we'll hear from the cantor. So the first thing uh, about the virtual Seder, which is even more important than an uh, in-person Seder is to prepare, you know, to just get on a call with your loved ones and expect it to happen. Uh, I don't think it's gonna happen very successfully. So for example, in our family, I'm thrilled to tell you that the next generation, uh, my daughter and her cousins have been on, I think now four Zoom calls just to get ready for the Seder that we're gonna do. Uh, and during these planning calls, uh, they figured out what parts of the Haggadah they're gonna do, 
how the kids are going to be involved. Turns out they're doing a, a skit, uh, kind of telling the story, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, but uh, it's not too late to do this. So if you're planning on doing a virtual Seder, uh, I would certainly advise you to get on a FaceTime or a Zoom call or a Google Duo or a Hangout and talk with a couple of your key people that you're bringing in on the video call to talk about how you're going to plan this, who's going to do what, so it's not a free-for-all. Uh, the last thing I think we want to do is sit together and read the Haggadah. I think that would be boring out of, out of sight. So do plan some time to prepare between now and your Seder. Second point, which again, I, I've been advising all these years, is to give homework, to give assignments. I think it's really terrific when people who are gonna be on the call and involved in your Seder have some contribution to make in advance. Now these contributions, this homework as I call it, could be anything as simple as, you know, uh, could you read part of the Haggadah and this is the part we want you to read or talk about? Or it could be uh, preparing something to share with everybody on the call. Uh, but I think it's really very valuable that people have some sort of assignment so they know what they're expected to do, how they're expected to participate, and what they can bring to the call. So that's my second tip, is to give some assignments, give some homework, and my experience is people really like that. Uh, I can tell you briefly one of the best I ever did with a friend of mine. This was a guy who came to our Seder in person for 20 years, and I could never get him to accept homework. I, I could never get him to do anything to prepare for the Seder. And I realized it wasn't his fault, it was my fault, because I hadn't thought enough about what he could bring to the Seder table that could enhance our Seder experience. So uh, I got this brainstorm this one year and I called him up and I said, hey Steve, I know that you're a wine connoisseur. So how about this? Why don't we turn our Seder into a wine tasting? Now, I don't know if this would work this year, but that year it worked. I said to Steve, I'll buy the wine, but I want you to do the research on four great varietals of kosher per Pesach wine that we could bring to the table. So we get to the Seder table that year, and of course the first thing you do is Kadesh, is the Kiddush. So I turned to Steve and I said, to everybody at the table, I said, Steve's gonna be our first contributor of the evening. So Steve stands up in front of everybody, everyone's in shock, because the guy had never opened his mouth all those years at the Seder. So he stands up in front of everybody and he holds up the first bottle of wine, pretend this is a bottle of wine. And he says, my friends, our first selection of the evening is a Baron Herzog 1993 Cabernet Sauvignon. <laughs> and if you put it in your Kiddush cup and you swirl it around and you smell the oaky flavors and the tannins and you taste it gingerly, you will find this is a very fine Kosher for Pesach wine. Well, he was the hit of the Seder because he did this four times during the Seder. So when you're thinking about what you want people to do, think about what their talent is, think about what they could bring. Maybe they sing, maybe they could read a story, whatever you know about them that they could bring to the table that would be good. And speaking of story, that's my third tip. You know, the whole point of the Passover Seder is to tell the story of the Exodus from Mitzrayim, from Egypt, and our liberation from bondage. And the goal of the Seder is actually the most important sentence in the Haggadah. In every generation, it's incumbent upon each of us to feel as if we ourselves were there at the exodus from Egypt. So how do you do that? Well, you tell the story. And there are lots of ways to tell the story. For me, it's always that Magid section of the Haggadah. 
So while I pick out key selections to read from the Haggadah, I always find a way to tell the story, particularly if children are on the call. And in fact, the best way to tell the story is to have the kids tell the story. So for example, in the Seder I'll be participating with, with my wife, Susie, who by the way is doing great. Her kidney function was 13% when we arrived here two months ago. And last week it was 75% with her new kidney. I mean, it's just a miracle. But the kids, all the cousins have been preparing a skit to tell the story of the exodus from Egypt and they have lines. So our grandchildren have been practicing for a week now on their lines that they're gonna be performing, if you will, when we get to the Magid section of telling the story of the exodus from Egypt. And there are lots of ways to do it. I mean, some people uh, do storytelling. Some people will ask kids to read part of the story or part of the Haggadah. There are PJ Library books and other sorts of books where kids could read to adults. And I think that would be a great way to involve the kids. Uh, there, there are all kinds of parody songs. If you go on the internet and Google in Passover parody songs, you will find hundreds of songs that you could sing together on your virtual Seder that are lots of fun and keep people engaged. The fourth point I would make is to ask questions. Seder is all about asking questions. So you can again ask questions of your Seder participants and have them prepare some sort of small response or Devar Torah that they're prepared to give at a certain point in the Haggadah recitation. Or you can pull out questions. Uh, so, for example, an obvious one this year is there are 10 plagues in the story of the Exodus in the Haggadah. What's something that plagues us today? Duh. I mean, come on. And that could be a whole conversation for a few minutes about how you're handling this, this uh, very difficult time we're in. Or you could ask a question. One of my favorites, I wrote a piece about this that I can certainly send to you to pass along on hand washing. You know, there, there's not one hand washing at the Seder, there are two hand washings at the Seder. The rabbis must have been either very conscious about what was gonna be happening in the world or, uh, and prophetic, but actually I think the real reason there are two hand washings is that at the beginning of the Seder in the Haggadah, what do you have? You've got Kadesh, which is wine and celebrating the moment. You've got Orchatz, the first hand washing. Then you've got Karpas, which is an appetizer. And the fourth thing you do is to break the middle matzah. So what's the obvious next thing to do? Have a meal. And that's probably how the first Sidorim actually unfolded. But in the Talmud, there's a whole, a whole discussion about this. And clearly they couldn't get Uncle Harry to stay at the table after he's had his dessert. So the rabbis moved the meal from the beginning of the evening to towards the end of the evening after you've told the story and done most of the ritual. So Urchatz itself is a very strange Jewish ritual because it's one of the few rituals we have where there's no blessing. And sometimes it's the leader him or herself who does the kind of ritual hand washing while everybody else waits. This year, I think I would recommend everybody spend five minutes and go wash their hands twice during the Seder at Orchatz and Rochza. And at the first hand washing, you might ask the question, what kind of blessing could we add this year to Orchatz? And I suggest the Birkata Gomel. Uh, a blessing for those of us who have escaped danger. And I assume if you're at the Seder, you have so far escaped this terrible plague, and I hope you will stay safe in the days and months to come. So that's the fourth point, ask questions. The fifth point is innovate. Uh, find something new to do. 
So one of the things that people have done over the last number of years is to find a new symbolic item for the Seder plate. And this year at my Seder plate, I'm putting a surgical mask because I want people to know, as Susie and I have been doing now for two months, we wear a mask everywhere. Not because we have the virus, but because we must protect Susie, which she's so immunosuppressed to prevent rejection of her new kidney. We wear N95 masks we have now for two months, way before this thing hit. So now, you know, everybody, if you go out, should wear a mask uh, to protect others. So we're putting a mask in our Seder plate this year. That's an innovation. Number six, have a good time, have fun. And there I go back again to uh, the idea of the parody songs, but you also might do some other things that would be fun. All right, can you guys still see me? Oh, here's some ideas. Very good idea. Great. Um, here's another way to have fun with it. Uh, uh, we went to a Seder once where the leader of the Seder was a magician, an amateur magician, and he did magic tricks during the Seder. So i never forget the first one was he made the afikoman literally disappear. He broke the middle matzah and he put it in a napkin and he showed it to the kids that the napkin held the afikoman matzah and he did some, you know, abracadabra and he, hold it, he held up the, the napkin in the this piece of matzo had literally disappeared. And it, it turned out to be a magician's scarf, which had a secret pocket. And he put the little piece of afikoman in that pocket. But it, the kids went wild because this guy actually made the afikoman uh, disappear. It was fantastic. So all you amateur magicians out there, have some fun with the Seder. Number seven point, uh, afikoman gifts. At our Seder, we always give every kid a gift, whether they find the afikoman or not. This year, in anticipation of the virtual Seder, we actually sent the afikoman gift Susie and I give to our grandchildren uh, through the mail uh, last week. So uh, our daughter is already holding those gifts for her. I don't know if it's too late to get it to your kids or grandkids, but I recommend you try to get those Afi Komen gifts out in your priority mail tomorrow. Number eight is be inclusive. So spend time during your virtual Seder trying to get everybody to unmute and answer a question or sing a song or somehow be involved. Because the last thing you want to see at the top of your Zoom screen is uh, Uncle Mort left the meeting. <laughs> you don't want to see that. You want to keep them engaged. And my guess is these Sidorum on virtual Zoom meetings and so on are going to be shorter than normal. Uh, number nine is to, uh, I as a Jewish educator want to give you permission to be creative. Uh, we're going to have to be creative this year, even more than usual. So do the best to make it engaging and creative and fun and interesting. And the last point I would make number 10, is back to washing your hands. Uh, I think uh, I'd make a big deal out of that this year. And I would certainly want to say to everyone around the virtual Seder table how critically important it is to continue this practice, not just of social distancing and not just wearing a mask, but of washing your hands. And a lot of people have said, wash them for 20 seconds to happy birthday two times. Well, guess what? Elu, elu, hotzianu, hotzianu, mi mitzrayim, hotzian, mi mitzrayim, die, nu. Everyone, die, die, nu, die, die, nu, die, die, nu, die, nu, die, nu. 20 seconds, my friends. So that's my contribution to your virtual state of this year. And I wish you a Chag Sameach and stay safe. Danny, you're up.
or are there any questions? If anybody wants to unmute and ask okay. questions. I was okay. muted, so this time. Um, so we have a chat uh, feature. So if someone, because uh, unless you want to unmute everyone, Tom, what do you, what do you want to do best? No, use the chat. All right. If anybody has any questions, put them in the chat. Uh, Ron, you and Susie, it's great to hear that you're both doing great. Uh, if you see Alan Gottesman, that's what a, a year out looks like from a, from a kidney transplant. Uh, it, it all, it's all for the good. So it's good to have you Sorry. on the call. It's great to see Alan on the call. And uh, there, there is a future. Yes, there is. So yes, thank you, Ron. Um, as the chat, the chat, use the raise hands feature. Danny's face gets in the way of the background. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. Glad all is well. This is from Alan. Thank you all for your creative ideas. Can we discuss projecting a Haggadah on the screen? Why not? Everyone attending my Seder will have a virtual share screen. All right. So, um, Tom, we're going to have to unmute Creighton. I know that's challenging. We don't really want to uncrate, uncrate Creighton, but we're going to have to unmute him. Uh, if I can find Creighton, I'll unmute him. Well, thank you, Ron. That was. Uh, that was terrific. Some great, great ideas. Uh, and we're going to, um, that we're going to uh, between before we hear from Steve, we have, um, a special little thing we're going to do. Great. are you there? He's not showing up. Well, that would be really challenging. That would be too bad. I saw him before. Just give us one second, guys. All right, well, we're not going to hold everyone up. I'm trying to find the All right, well, let's. As, as uh, Ron just said, let's innovate. So I got him, have, I got him. I got him. There we go. Again. Creighton. Hey, there I am. Happy birthday, Creighton. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Happy Sunday, everybody. Whose birthday it's not today. Just think of all those people washing their hands singing happy, singing happy birthday to you. Amen. So um, this may be a little bit tricky, Tom. So we've got a, a little convention trivia question or qu trivia quiz we put together. Is it possible to unmute everyone or otherwise we won't be able to hear them? Yeah, I'll, they'll, they'll write it in. They write it in. You want to write it in? Um, all right, we can try that. Let's see how it goes. Um, so what I'm going to do then, I need to shift over here to get to my convention tr trivia questions. So we've got a series of great prizes for you tonight. Danny, are you all ready to go with the, uh, the great prizes we have this evening? I do. They're right behind me. And all you have to do is come here and get them. Okay. So if you get a question right, all you have to do is get to Danny Mando's house. And uh, you're in Newton, right? I'm in Newton. This is from Zelda's. I brought these back with me, if you see behind me. Okay. So we've got fresh Chicago pastries ready to go. But you just have to get to Danny's house in the next, what do we decide? Half hour? I give him 45 minutes. 45 well, minutes, all right. This excludes Marty Paley because he'll really come. So everyone except <laughs> Marty Paley, this is good for. Because Marty actually lives in Newton. <laughs> all right. So the first question, and this is a little bit technically difficult for me. Give me one second, guys. Hold on. Let me get to the right screen here. All right, this should work. Oh, nope, lost it. 
Hey, listen, it's the first time we're doing this, so, you know, bear with us. All right, Creighton's back on mute. Unmute now. Sorry, there we go. Okay. So, what is written in Hebrew in the IKC's logo? First person to get it typed in there wins. And again, Danny, what do they get? A series of, uh, of pastries? Yeah, all they want before Wednesday. Pretty impressive stuff. Anybody know? L'chaim. Norm Kurtz. L'chaim. No. A little disappointed you guys haven't spent more time uh, stirring your whiskey glasses. There it is. Benny Sommerfeld. Shahakol Nieb Bidvaro. Perfect. There you go. So, Benny, you got to get to, uh, to, to, to Massachusetts. It's, it's just down the road. I'm sure you can get there shortly. Benny, I'll be All waiting right, for you. All right, two. Which convention included a meeting of the Royal Order of the Jewish Water Buffalo? Anybody? Miami. Who is Who was that? Somebody popped that up first already. I was north. I don't know if Miami. Can we, can we accept Miami, Danny? I think it might be North Miami. That's okay. Miami's right, fine. Close enough. All right, three. Which FJMC president has appeared on a jumbotron as FJMC president? There it is. Mark, somebody popped up. Mike there. Mills. Mike Mills, correct. Uh, <laughs> for bonus points, what city? There it is. Yes. Is it Bob Breitman? Boston, I guess we'll accept, or Danvers. And double bonus, who won the game? Yeah, the Red Sox. The Red Sox. Yeah, of course. All right. What city was the 2008 convention held in? Chicago. Norm Kurtz, Chicago. Yeah, nice try. There, well, there it is. Ken Turkwitz pulls it off. None in 2008. That's right. A trick question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when did the uh, Rabbi Geffen Institute begin? Looking for city and year. I know that one, but I won't answer. Well, you know all of them. You've seen them. Oh, that's true, too. <laughs> but I actually would have known that. Oh, so I'm Brayman's giving you a close. hint. If I know. Uh, Bob Braven's close, but it looks like we, we've got Chicago is correct. But what year? It wasn't 2008, little hint. There it is, 2007. Correct. Bob Braven. All right. Uh, this one's a, uh, it's a, going to be a tough one. Which convention had the absolute worst food? <laughs> yeah, all right. You're going to have a rush on uh, uh, at your house there, uh, Danny, I'm pretty sure. All right, so uh, which convention had the – yeah, it was North Miami Beach. Yeah, we uh, got it. The had the, uh, which convention had the best food? Toronto from Bruce. Benny, Toronto. Correct, correct, correct. All right. When did we have a convention with a bank vault in the lobby? There it is. I couldn't see who popped up first. Philadelphia is correct. Uh, all right. In okay. which convention do right. you celebrate July 1st and why? July 1st and why? There it is. Dave Beckham, but why? There it is. Canada Day. Correct. All right. This is the last answer. question. This is it. Oh, is it? Yeah. All right. All right. Well, I got a couple more. All right. So what was the name of the pizza place across from the hotel in North Miami Beach where most of us ate our meals? Close, oh, Elliot Brown, Sal's and Maddox, my favorite. Don't remember, pizza's good, that's good. Shlomo's, I think I, I think I would accept Shlomo's. It was actually Venezia Pizza, Venezia. And I had to look it up because I had no recollection either, but I did have quite a few meals and enjoy a lot of camaraderie with my brothers there. Um, I got to ask one last question, Danny. Okay. Squeezing it in. What's the name of the river right next to the hotel where the 2021 convention is going to take place? Chicago, Gary Cage. Cage. Comes in the Chicago River, yes. So the Chicago Convention 2021. Danny, thank you. Chag Sameach to everybody. Uh, Good job, uh, Creighton. Thank you. Thank you for the happy birthday. Is the, uh, the mild thing of the happy birthday because you all were muted. Have a wonderful night, everyone. See, now if you've never been to a convention, look what you can look forward to in Chicago in a, in a year or so from now. So, all right. Um, and so one of the highlights always at conventions is our Cantor's concert. And uh, Steve Storr is always a big part of, of that. And um, take it away, Steve. You have to be unmuted.
You have to unmute. Well, I'll mute you first. Yeah. No, wrong Steve. Steve, you're unmuted. I think I'm unmuted. You're unmuted. There we go. Hi, everybody. I appreciate the opportunity for this next hour. And um, now it's about 20 minutes, I think, I've been given. But I can tell you from the time Ron Wolfson started until now, we've lost uh, 37 viewers. So I'm going to see what I can do to, uh, to, to drop that even lower. Uh, I was really appreciate, uh, I, I appreciate greatly being able to talk about Haggadah a little bit. I have about 160 Haggadot. I, I really enjoy collecting them. This is the one I often use. It's annotated. You can kind of see, you know, the work that I try to do every year to, to create new ideas and new questions for my family. Uh, that's sort of an advertisement for the new Cantor's Assembly Feast of Freedom Supplement. When we went to uh, visit the Abayudaya Jews in Uganda, we created this beautiful supplement that you can find on the Cantor's Assembly website. And it comes with links, so you can push that and hear uh, different musical links that were put together by a number of very talented Cantors. And if you ever do something with an African-American community Seder, um, I've, I've written one called Coexist. If you're interested, give me a call. And just don't call me because you like to collect things. And go, yeah, send that to me. And then you never use it. If you're interested and you might use it in your community, I'd be happy to share that with you. I've had a lot of enjoyable time um, with Federation from uh, doing the Minchamar of Havdalah recordings to emceeing at the conventions and singing with my colleagues and the Minion of Comfort stuff. So uh, I, I really do cherish the relationship that we have developed. I'm going to start with a joke just because it's just us guys. Oh yeah, hi Mimi, and uh, a few other people. But somebody told me a joke about an elderly gentleman who uh, needed some deodorant. So he sent his grandson, grandson out to buy him some. He brought it back, but he didn't bring the, bring the spray deodorant. He brought this stick deodorant. So the grandpa, you know, says, thank you. The next day, the grandson said, how, how did it work? He said, fine. He said, I don't quite get it, though. It says, open top. I open top. It says, push up bottom. He says, I haven't been able to walk straight since. Thank you. I appreciate the laughter, even though... Uh, but when I pass gas, it smells like Irish Spring. No. Anyhow, uh, another friend of mine who is a, she's studying to become a, a minister, said that they are going to inst institute a fast day prior to Good Friday, uh, which falls on Pesach. But very much like the Jewish people have forever, um, we fast in times of difficulty and trouble. And Tanis Esther and Tanis Bechoros and, and all those sorts of things. And I know some of us who are Bechorim try to go to a seum in the morning so we don't have to fast, we get out of it. But maybe fasting and praying a little harder this time of year would be something pretty spiritual, um, hoping that maybe we can bring about a small miracle um, because of the plagues, sadly, that we're, that we're undergoing. So just a little suggestion to those of you um, who might take it to heart. So the Seder is all about l'saper, right? And to some of us we, who know Hebrew, that sounds like to tell, to tell a story, a sipur, to tell a story. Some people, it's all about sitting down to supper, to supper. And it's all about rub-a-dub-dub, thanks for the grub, thank you, God, boom, right? We're, we're at the meal, and then nothing gets done after the meal because there's never enough time. So I want to sing some stuff for you, but I also want to teach some stuff to you because that's in, in fact what cantors want to do. And you should be able to know that, those of you who come to Federation of Men's Club conventions, that we are there not just to sing and entertain, but we're there to teach. So the first thing I want to teach is a Kadesh Urchatz. Some people sing Kadesh Urchatz. Most people sing that one. This is one I learned a number of years ago. I think it has a Sephardic um, history to it. Kadesh Urchatz, Karpas Yachatz, Magid Rochza, Motsi Matzah, 
maror korech shulchan orech safun barech halel niritzah. Very pretty, and it's nice to bring something, as Dr. Wolfson was saying, bring some innovation in, bring some different melodies in. The Kiddush that we sing talks about Zman Cherutenu, um, right? We left Egypt, and it's another name for Pesach, of course, Zman Cherutenu, freedom. <clears throat> I think that's another opportunity for discussion at your Sedarim, is talk about the freedom that we don't have these days, the quarantine that we're in, the difficulty it is, and then maybe ask the question to somebody, when, is it, when was it that you felt most free in your life? And as we've gotten older, sometimes you reflect and think, well, when I was seven or eight years old, I had nothing to worry about except playing ball and riding my bike. Well, maybe it was in college, maybe it's when you figured out your career. But it's a, a wonderful question to ask specifically in this time of feeling shackled and bound. Um, we're blessed to have homes, many people don't have homes, but even being in a beautiful home, when you can't go where you'd like to go, that's difficult. Um, and I think it'd be an interesting time to, to add this Negro spiritual, which is, oh, freedom, oh, freedom, oh, freedom over me. And before I'd be a slave, I'd be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. What a perfect song. Um, before I'd be a slave, I'd be buried in my grave. And we can talk about the fact that Jewish people were slaves and the, the, the strength it took to, to persevere that time. Kiddush, Baruch Hashem, like him, like Allah, Bore Priyadav, You don't want to use Hanukkah, Shech, Yanu, Vekeyamanu. You want to go to the proper Nusach, and that Nusach is based on Akdamut. Anybody go to a show that they still say Akdamut? Akedumuz Milam Vershusa, Havan Shekilna. It's a da di da 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 and it's found its way into the Kiddush for all Pesach, Sukkot, and Shavuot. But it's a very beautiful melody, and if you don't know it, have your chazan teach it to you. And if you don't have a chazan, uh, turn to one of your FJMC friendly cantor people, and uh, we'll be delighted to make you a, a melody for it. Dr. Wolfson talked about washing your hands twice, bikavana, with a sense of purpose. Uh, somebody has been putting out a very cute, um, Facebook type of post, which is Kadesh Urchatz, Kadpas Urchatz, Magid Urchatz, Notzi Urchatz. Just do it as often as you can. <clears throat> that Yach Urchatz is the washing of the hands, and there's no bracha. So sometimes on the way in, I have the kids singing just to fill the time with Shavtemayim Besasam Imayne Hayeshua. Sing some sort of Mayim, 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 Mayim song. To, uh, to fill the air, rather than it just being a quiet time at your Seder. Karpas is ketonet. So why do we use a green vegetable? Because A, it's springtime. B, it's the time of, of blooming and things are turning green. Some people we say we use green, which reminds us of the coat of Joseph, the coat of many colors, the ketonet pasim. And the color Green reminds us that if it weren't for the fact that Joseph was sold by his brothers who ended up in the jail, who ended up in Egypt, who brought down his family, we never would have been enslaved. So it's really the, the um, jealousy of his brothers that started this whole act of slavery, this, this chain that led to the slavery. And so we use that colorful item of Karpas. I don't know if you've heard that before, if you didn't. And if you like music a lot, you could always uh, liven up the Seder by singing a, a song from Joseph. Um, that just might be a, a, fun, a fun addition to your service. Yachatz, the breaking of the matzah. What an important lesson. How many of us are breaking, you know, rationing toilet paper? You know, we're worried about running out of different things. I mean, that's the, the solution to not eating more toilet paper is eating more matzah. But that's, that's a different uh, the point. The, the, the yachats of putting, breaking the bread and putting it away. What if we don't have enough for later? What if there are poor who need it? 
so again, take the opportunity to teach about that yachatz and, and savoring and rationing. Gandhi once said, there are people for whom bread is akin to God. There are people so poor. I, I've, I've been on Atkins for 17 or 18 years. I don't remember. Uh, I, have, I don't eat bread. The only time I eat matzah is that little bit for the bracha. That's it. No fried matzah, no salami and matzah, no nothing. Uh, and one time I was asked to do the motzi at a Holocaust Museum dinner. And I thought it would have been horrible if I did the mochi and I, and I, in front of that group of survivors, didn't eat the bread, that I wasted the bread that they cried for and, and, and begged for each and every day. So talk about the importance of, of just a morsel of bread and how important that is. Magid, halachma, um, I use a melody that, that you may use too. Halachma anya diya khalu Ahab tana beyara beyara de Mitzrayim Chodich vin ye tevi echol Chodich srich ye tevi efsa Hashat ahacha Shana haba beyara de Israel Hashat ahabde Shana haba benechorim or some variant thereof, you might you may have sung that also. Uh, when it comes to feeding the poor, halachma anya, right? We just broke the matzah, and now we're talking about bread. This is the bread of affliction, or the bread that we sing about, or the bread of the poor people. Um, there's, I, I don't know where I got this. I didn't make it up. But one time I, I learned somebody that said, when it comes to feeding poor people, like halachma anya, giving it to those who need, I'd rather a person be an atheist than a, a, uh, a religious Jew. I'd rather a person be an atheist rather than be a, a religious faith-filled Jew. Why? We'll cut to the chase. You might have the answer, but you're muted. Ha, ha, ha. Um, so the answer is because an atheist will not believe that God will help that poor person and they'll go out and actually do something about it. And somebody who believes, oh, God will provide, Hashem will, Lord Hashem, they'll be fine tomorrow, whatever, whatever. But when it comes to feeding people, don't wait for the Mashiach. Don't wait for God. Don't wait for a miracle. Don't wait for anybody but yourself. So uh, think about that when you're, when you're doing that. Avadim hayinu, manish I think we all know. So there's two ways to do it. The, the traditional And I'm sure while we've been on this uh, Zoom meeting, Leon Cher has written five different versions of it. So you can call my buddy Leon and ask him for a version or watch Cantor Propus at his fireside chat um, and his singing. But oftentimes there's something we call the learning steiger. It's a, it's a beautiful way to chant through the entire Haggadah if you don't have a, a melody. Avadim Hayinu is a melody that, that most of us know. Avadim Hayinu, the Farah B'Mitzrayim, B'Mitzrayim, remember, means not just Egypt, but the narrow places, the confined places, the constricted places uh, that we once lived. And again, you can relate that to what we're going through today. Avadim hayinu, hayinu, ata b'nei chorim, b'nei chorim. Avadim hayinu, ata, ata b'nei chorim. Avadim hayinu, ata, ata b'nei chorim, b'nei chorim. Um, right before the four sons, there's a wonderful thing, Baruch HaMakom Baruch Hu, Baruch Shanatan Torah, Le'amo Yisrael Baruch Hu. Um, so here's the melody that we use, you may as well. Baruch HaMakom Baruch Hu, Baruch Shanatan Torah, Shanatan Torah, Le'amo Yisrael Baruch HaMakom Baruch Hu. Everybody sing the Baruch HaMakom. It's really a, a joyful thing. And uh, my mom, who's 95, threw her hip out last year. So we're going to kind of bring that down a little bit. But the beautiful statement here within says, Baruch Shanat Torah Le'emon Israel, Who? Baruch Hu. The Holy One gave the children of Israel, God gave his children the Torah. What is the greatest gift a parent can give a child? Great discussion question around the table. 
The next part, the four children. Uh, I just want to point out one little thing that's not a melody, so sorry that I'm not playing Cantor at the moment the way some of you expected. But it says, Kineged Arba Avanim Dibra Torah. With regard to, the word connected can mean with regard to, but it can also mean like, like against or in a negative way. There's something said about each of the four sons that's wrong. So you say, what could he say about the Chacham? What's wrong with the Chacham? And if you like trope, if you like punctuation, you, know, ever, you ever know those things that say, let's eat grandma? You know, let's eat grandma. But if you put a comma, let's eat grandma, right? Or um, What's the other one? Stay out. No entrance is permitted. It could be stay out, question mark. No, entrance is permitted. So punctuation is really very vital. And that's the case with the Torah all the time. Bereshit bara came at the the first sentence of the Torah. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Or you can say Bereshit bara, and the beginning created Elohim at the Shemaim at God and the, and, the, and the heavens and the earth. So it was like more of a big bang thing. So it depends where the tropes are and where the accents are. So here, look at the Chacham. It says, Chacham Mahu Omer. The Chacham, what does he say? Put the commas in a different place. Chacham Mahu, question mark, Omer. The Chacham, what is he? He's a big talker. He knows everything. He knows everything. And he talks about it and he brags about it. But does he really follow through? So there's all sorts of little hidden gems in the, um, in the service. Matchila of day. Avdei Zara, we were once uh, idol worshippers in, uh, in, in the past, Abraham's father, right, in the story of smashing the idols. Uh, some things that we do probably seem like, like archaic or pagan or idol worship. So talk about that at your Seder. What are some of the traditions your parents did that you no longer do because they just fell out of favor? And what make the next generation not follow that we've done? Talis, Tzitzis, Shabbos, Kosher, Hoshana Rabba, and and hitting the lulavim, kol nevaser, maybe yo, smacking the lulavim and the, and the uh, willows. Talk about that. How pertinent is the religion that you are living to the next generation? Um, it's not just all about singing, die, 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 enu. Vehi sheyamda, vehi sheyamda, vehi sheyamda, lavotenu velanu. Vehi sheyamda, vehi sheyamda, lavotenu velanu. Shelo echa bilevat, amad aleinu lechalotenu. Ela shebechol edor vador, amdim aleinu lechalotenu. Vehakadosh baruchu, matzileinu meyada. These might be familiar to you, but maybe they're just getting you in the mood for the Seder. The 10 plagues don't have a melody, of course, because we're not proud or happy that in fact, people died for us to gain our freedom. The whole door vador, in every generation, we have to feel the harot, lirot that that's more, we have to feel as if we were in Egypt, right? Some people say leharot, we have to appear as if we were in Egypt and they dress up in garb and walk around the table and the uh, Persian community, I know hits each other with scallions as if they were the, the whips of the taskmasters. So we dress up and, um, uh, and we try to relive the Seder to the best of our, or, or our, our history to the best of our ability. Um, then we get to Hallel, which is all about singing. And I won't go through too much more. Do I have two, three more minutes? I don't even remember how much time I've had. I'm trying to talk really fast. So, um, there was one other thing I wanted to share in particular. We were talking about Bitzit Yisrael. So there's a couple melodies. Bet Yisrael mi Mitzrayim, Bet Yaakov me'an lo'ez. That's the one I grew up with. I guarantee you hardly anybody out there knows it, unless you're from Pittsburgh and you went to my home shul. Um, the Malach Hayam, we're all used to. That was actually a, much a, a part of them. That's the melody of a, I don't even think it's a melody. It might even be the, the alto line of a much larger choral, choral um, composition. 
So Google that sometime and, and hear the whole glorious Malach Hayam. But the idea is God took us out of Egypt. And there's two quotes I want to share with you. Achad Ha'am said, the masters have ceased to be masters, but the slaves have not ceased to be slaves. Put that in your pipe. And Harriet Tubman said the same sort of thing when she was talking about the Underground Railroad. She said, I could have saved a lot more people if I could have convinced them that they were slaves. So the mentality of a person can make one a slave or free one from a sense of slavery. Rachatz, we wash our hands. Motzi matzah. If you love matzah, you're a matzakist. Um, too much matzah, I think you'd be called a matzakist. Maror korev shulchan orach tzafun halrech. Balel, Eliyahu Hanavi, Eliyahu Hanavi, Eliyahu Hatishbi, Eliyahu, Eliyahu, Eliyahu Hagiladi. I think most of us uh, know that melody. And then there's other parts of Halel. I'll just end because I don't want to take up everybody's time. I think we're supposed to end by eight, and it's already 7.53 or so on my clock. Um, the last part, Nirza. Um, my dad taught me to sing it to Hatikva. Maybe many, any of you do that. Many of um, the idea of the future that God will redeem us and bring us to our land. And then we'll finish with Lashana Haba. Leshana haba, leshana haba, leshana haba, Birushalayim leshana haba, Birushalayim habnuya, leshana haba, Birushalayim habnuya, leshana haba, leshana haba, leshana haba, Birushalayim. And let's hope next year we gather together and we enjoy another experience like this uh, together where we can have, um, we can do it in person uh, and everybody will be well and free from the angel of death, if you will, this 11th plague that we're all suffering with. Uh, I wish you a chag kasher, a kosher, a bri, a healthy, and a chag sameach, a happy Pesach as well. Chag sameach. Thank you, Steve. So if you're not in the mood for Passover by this point, you might as well forget about it because two really uh, great uh, talks about how, what, what we have to do different this year. And it is different, but there's always positive from the negative. And the positive is this, this plague, this disease has, caught, has forced us to operate by mute and it's kind of cool. And it was really nice to see over a hundred people from all over North America to join together and we thank you very, very much for doing that. Thank you, Professor, for Dr. Ron, and thank you, Chazan Steve. We look forward to seeing you, particularly Steve, we'll see you in Chicago. Oh, and speaking of Chicago, guess what? <laughs> um, we're having a convention there. If you haven't found out yet, it's not such a secret, but uh, it's still on. Thank God that it's not this year right? Because it probably wouldn't be on, but it is next year. And um, 30 of you have already signed up for um, a unique part. What, one other thing that we're doing that's different this year is we're actually doing an installment plan. And if you're still interested, uh, we thank the 30 of you that have already signed up. Um, and 30 of, of those 39 are bringing your wives. So we already have 39 people going to convention and we're over a year ahead. So that's really wonderful. Um, and uh, it's never too late to, to do that, certainly before, before the hog game. So thank you, everyone. Um, hey, Danny, how do I do that? Oh, I don't know. I think you can go on the FJMC website. I think it's right there. Register now. So uh, we have lots of great stuff that we're already planning. And I really wasn't kidding. If the guys from California can get here, you can taste some of the pastries we're going to serve at convention. And this is going to go stale because, you know, I have to get rid of all the chametz before Wednesday. So that is the caterer. Uh, Zelda's, which if you're in Chicago, is a big deal. And we're very fortunate to have that. And the Sheridan is just terrific. And we're really excited about having this. And we'll do this again, if you'd like, before convention, for sure. Uh, just having us all get together and wishing each other 
Hogsamer. Thank you, everyone. Danny, Danny yes. just one brief second. Some yes, people have you. written me. Some people have written me questions on the Zoom group chat. Let me just ask you to write me personally to my email, and I'll answer. Where did you get this? What Haggadah is it? Do you have a melody, et cetera, et cetera? Because we're going to lose this once we go down. And this so, has also been recorded. Write so. me personally. A couple of you asked if this was recorded. It is recorded, so we do have this available to you. And we do have several other webinars going on over the next few weeks. So uh, it's our new reality. So thank you, everyone. And uh, Hak Sameach. Hak Sameach, everybody. Thank you, thank you, so much. Great Danny, job. Thank you for great organizing job. this. Thank you. Take care, everyone.